those of you that don't know me, my name is uh, Artil Vaughn. I am the uh, executive director of Project Save Photograph Archives. Um, and welcome to our, this is our first installment for the fall season, fall 2022 season of conversations on photography. Um, I'm so excited to kind of get back to this uh, series. Um, we launched it um, around New Year last year. Um, and it, it's been quite successful. Um, we've engaged with so many more people, different types of people all over the world. Um, a lot of non-Armenians who have taken a great interest in, in, in what we do at Project Save. And we're, we're very grateful for that and excited to get started again um, uh, in the, uh, with this inaugural event for the fall. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about our upcoming speakers. Um, uh, we have uh, Pavel Romanico, uh, who's a photographer and an artist. Uh, he will be uh, presenting uh, in November, early November. Uh, Elena Bulat, who is a, a photo conservator at uh, the Wiseman Museum at the Harvard University. Uh, she will be presenting in later this month. Um, David Lowe, who's a historian um, and has written a book that has a lot to do with photography and the Ottoman Empire. Uh, he'll be presenting in, in January. Um, and at some point, it looks like I'm going to be presenting um, in early December. But we'll keep you uh, abreast of all these uh, events. Um, you can check uh, all the events and you can also see past events uh, if you go to projectsafe.org. Uh, we just redid our website, so we're very excited about the, the new website we have. So feel free to go on there and, and check out pre previous events where you can register for upcoming events and check out um, our archives and all kinds of good stuff like that, videos and so forth. Um, <clears throat> some new developments with Project Save. Uh, other than the new website, we, we recently uh, launched our Artist in Residency and researcher in residency programs. Uh, we'll be having two artists in residence, uh, uh, residencies per year and two research in residencies per year. Um, this is a really unique initiative, especially in, in the Armenian world. Um, so I'm really excited uh, to, get, to get these going. This is a way for artists, researchers, writers, uh, to engage with the archives, the photographs of Project Save while here, they'll create a new work that somehow connects to our um, collections in our archive. They'll also engage with the community, they'll give talks and so forth. So we're very excited about that. Um, our first artist in residence is Pavel Romanico, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, Pavel is with us uh, until uh, December. Um, he is a photographer and artist originally from Russia. Uh, he's also a professor at University of Massachusetts in Lowell. Uh, so we're very excited to have him and he'll be, as I said, he'll be doing one of these events in, in uh, November. Um, and lastly, for those of you that don't know much about Project Save, I'll just say Project Save uh, has been around since really the, the late 60s, but officially since 1975. Um, at this point, we are the oldest, largest archive that is solely focused on photographs, original hard copy photographs uh, of the Armenian global experience. Um, at this point, we're somewhere, we've lost count. Uh, we're always trying to maintain what, what our current count is, but it's well over 75 to 80,000 original photographs spreading from the 19th century up until uh, the 21st century. Um, and uh, with that, I'm going to slowly kind of introduce uh, Norash, or not so slowly, introduce our speaker for today. Um, uh, Norash Shahinyan, who is a photographer, an architect by training, and, and a photographer. He is Brazilian Armenian. Um, he was uh, born in Sao Paulo, uh, Brazil. Uh, he received his architecture degree at Universidade Mackenzie and his master's in aesthetics and art history at the Universidad Sao Paulo. Uh, uh, and um, he has done a number of projects. Um, I got to know Norad when I was living in Armenia, we met there. And I think at that time he had just done his, his uh, wonderful book uh, called The Power of Emptiness, uh, Talking with Stones in Historical Armenia that was published in, uh, in uh, Istanbul by... Um, 
Aras, that's right. I, was, I, I knew it was with the name, the wonderful press, uh, Aras, in, yeah. in uh, Istanbul. Um, and uh, Norad has done a lot of different projects in Armenia, in historical Armenia, present-day Turkey, in the Middle East, uh, and in, in Brazil and other parts of the world. Uh, his, his talk today is called Photography as Tool, Language, and Builder. Uh, Norad will present uh, for about 20 to 30 minutes. Then after that, feel free to send in your questions. Um, and, uh, and as I uh, moderate, I'll be passing along those questions to Norad. Uh, Norad, welcome. Uh, we're so happy to have you. Um, feel free to share your screen and we'll get, we'll get started. But thank you so much for being here. By the way, Norad is in Yerevan now. So we especially appreciate that, um, you know, it's like three in the morning there. So thank you very much Norak, for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Arto. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, to be guest of this wonderful program, of this wonderful project called SAVE uh, that I follow for so long. Uh, uh, and I hope uh, we can uh, talk a little bit about photography, about our passion, our work, and uh, I will share here the screen. Mm -hmm. Is it? It'll probably pop on in a second. It usually takes a second to. Okay. Um, I want to also congratulate because it's so important the work that you guys are doing. Uh, collect photos, collect memories, is keep alive our history and give us tools and uh, reference for future works and uh, thank uh, you yeah yeah it's it's just a really appreciate a lot uh, project save work so is it let me let me see one second what are you having the let me see sure. no, you should be able to share yeah there we go. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I will start from this image uh, because it's the first image that I have from my family. Uh, this was the passport that uh, used to save the family from the, the 1915 genocide. At uh, that time, the passport was a family passport. So this was the first image that I have of my grandfather, who is the guy uh, far left wearing a hat. Uh, his name is Avedis. Uh, at this moment, he was seven years when the family escaped from Maraš uh, to Halep. Uh, the family settled in Halep, Halep and uh, Avedis started to work as a young professional with a big master of photography, uh, Vartan Derunian. Uh, he started to work there with 14 years uh, until 1937, when Vartan Derunian decided to move to Beirut. He assumed the studio and uh, he produced a lot of works during more than 40 years in Aleppo, Syria. Uh, we'll finish this presentation with a ongoing project that I'm working in his archive and I'm still looking uh, for more parts of his, of his archive. Uh, but I, 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 I think that it's a good way to start because it's from there that everything begin in my formation as a photographer, as an architect and as a, a humanist that like to use the photography uh, as a tool, as a builder, as a language, because this triangle uh, to me is connected and to me is the way that I can uh, provide uh, my, give my uh, 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 point of view of, of the world. So uh, let's, I will start, uh, I divided the presentation in three parts. So I will start uh, from my last book uh, that was mentioned by Arto. Uh, it was 
a promise that I made to him because he was the one who suffered the genocide and he didn't feel never comfortable to, to go back to his lands, but he always pushed me to say, son, you need to go. You need to talk with them about what happened. And our gun, our weapon is the photography. So try to use the photography as a way to connect with the past in the present and bringing hope to the future. So in 2012, I decided uh, to, to move to, to Turkey, to historic Armenia, but I start all this uh, journey from Istanbul. Uh, I feel myself as a bird uh, in, this, in this process because I was always going and coming back uh, as the, the migratory birds. Uh, so let's start this trip around uh, historical Armenia and then around other parts of the world. Uh, this image uh, was of one of the first images that I took uh, just when I arrived. Uh, it's the Karakoy uh, port in the center of Istanbul. And uh, it have a lot of meaning to me because uh, I was walking like for one week or so, and I didn't took any photo until I really understand uh, that importance of, of the birds that was able to cross all the borders and uh, the limits that was imposed by the subject. Uh, then I start to met with people and I was invited uh, to a, a Armenian party uh, in the salon behind the church. And I get shocked uh, with the image, yeah, my first time in Turkey of Mustafa Kemal inside uh, the Armenian church. And I was thinking how it possible. Uh, but then at the moment after, I saw all that Armenians uh, dancing and having fun. And I said, okay, if there was a plan uh, to exterminate our race, that plan failed. We are here, we're still here. Uh, they are not diaspora, they are the ones who stayed in that lands. So that gives me hope and uh, power to follow the next steps. I start to travel around the country. It was more than 12,000 kilometers traveling around all the historical cities, uh, villages, uh, sacred places, mountains, and all the uh, places that makes parts make made part of my past, you know, the, the stories that I listen from my family, and also new meetings, new people that uh, one by one was building you no know, uh, this project on my mind. When I first started, I didn't have clear what and how I will do this project, but uh, as uh, we say the, the, the thing is uh, not the destiny is important, but the path, the way to, 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 to discover is the journey. No? Uh, so I talk about emptiness because I was talking with the stones and the walls and the people uh, who wants to live it in that place. No? So that stones keep the memory alive, that doors, that uh, churches, all the places that I visit, uh, I felt the presence, not only the absence. No, people wasn't there, but it was like the energy of them is still there. Uh, like this image is a house of Armenian priests in Everek village. Uh, it's so strong because the house was left it like what, what happened, we know, but we didn't know exactly, but it was like people were still there, no? Like this one uh, in Aintep, uh, it's, a, it's a huge place, like all a quarter that used to belong to an Armenian family, I think Nazarian family. Uh, but this room, uh, it was so fulfilled of, of energy. And this was the places that I, I was, taking my energy, my battery charge it, no, because it was in a point, in a hand, difficult 
to 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 convive with with this emptiness but also it was on this emptiness that i i i get power to 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 follow and to discover more no uh, the emptiness is not only the spaces but also the nature no this was the point of view of our uh kings from the pagan times no the nemrut mountain is a sacred place also to armenians before the christianism uh, so this was the view of the cemetery uh, at the morning uh, so this endless mountains uh, also uh, speaks a lot to me um, here we have the sipan mountain and the lake van uh, who also is makes uh, part of our history and this meeting to me was like uh, a turning point, no? Because uh, until I met this family, I just had met the people from Istanbul, the Armenians from Istanbul. Uh, but when I met this family in Gerger village, it's a village close to Karta. It's a very hidden place uh, where the, the mass killings didn't arrive it as arrived in the big city. So, uh, this first woman at left, she was a survivor of the genocide. Uh, but by destiny, the family who decided to grow her as an orphan throw, uh, told her the truth, said, you are Armenian, uh, we will grow you as you want, free. Uh, you will decide if you will be Christian or Muslim. Uh, you will decide if you feel yourself Armenian or Kurdish, it was a Kurdish family. And this old woman, she decided to keep uh, the, the, the memory of, of her ancestors who she didn't met. And for the future, she grow his daughter, his granddaughter, and his grand granddaughter as Armenians at the same village as women in Turkey. We know what it means, no? And all them, until today, they say proudly that they are Armenian. The first three generations didn't speak Armenian, but the fourth generation study at Istanbul and at the uh, we, uh, holidays, they, she, she come back to the village to teach Armenian to the other generation. So this is a kind of uh, a rebirth and a, a little piece of hope that still Armenians there. And it's very important to, to everybody who didn't visit visited uh, these sacred lands to go there. And I received this message from this, this second woman at the left. Uh, she, she said, please take a photo of me with the Hajj, with the cross, because I want to people know that we're still here. We are Armenians, we are Christians. Hernan Dink used to say that this number can reach a million. Uh, I don't know the number, but I know that they are there. So this is important to say because uh, many people don't feel comfortable or safe to go uh, uh, to Turkey, but we need to know that there are people there waiting for us and waiting for people who can spread their existence. So this family was very meaningful to me uh, and to my work. Uh, these people also, as is very important uh, to our history, they are ancestors from the ones who survived for more than 50 days on Musaler. So it's a very well-known history uh, story. Uh, they still living there in the same village where their grandfathers survived. No, Vakifla is the last Armenian village uh, in, in Turkey, in present Turkey. Uh, and we are seated exactly at the same point where they are so from, uh, from the sea by a French boat who came after to rescue them. So it was also important to be with them and understand the reality that they live and how they kept alive the, 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 their roots in, in that lands. Uh, this message carved on the wall, I found in a, in a house that used to be my family, my grandmother family house, Der Bedrosian in Urfa. Uh, 
this moment that I touched this stone uh, was the moment that I understand that it's so important, uh, uh, this contact uh, with the past, you know? At that moment, uh, it was like all my pain was gone because in that house, uh, 33 members of the family was assassinated, but two, two of them was able to escape, my grand-grandfather and a brother of him. Uh, they made the agreement if in case that they get separated, they will write to another one to another where they are going. And this message was wrote in 1922 uh, when uh, Bedros wrote that he was going to Halep, thinking that maybe Harutun, his brother, could read that message. Harutun never read that message, but by destiny, they found each other in a refugee camp in Aleppo. And nobody never came back of them to, to Urfa. 90 years after, a fourth generation member uh, was able to, to reach the message and also was a, 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 a closing uh, point or, or a circle. No, it's a moment that the things get together. And to me, it was the, the last chapter of, of the pain that I felt inside me, you know, because we in Brazil or in every place of the world where there is a diaspora, we in general, we grow. Uh, with this pain, with this anger against against the the ones who committed genocide, but in this moment, all that pain was finished on me, and I felt myself better to to deal and to and to talk uh, with 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 the people, with the local people. Uh, there is many other messages lost in the in the that lands, no, uh, some initials, but in other houses I found another message. So. Uh, it's important to visit and to, to see uh, we, what is still there, not only stones, but also people and messages and places that once upon a time was part of our society, our culture, our religion, and this. Uh, for those who don't know, in Turkey, we have we still have more than 20 Armenian schools, more than 4,000 students, that uh, still learning the Armenian language with all the difficulties, they are still there. And this is important to say because uh, we know how important is our language and our culture and had good schools in Istanbul is not in every place that we can find. Uh, for an example in Brazil, uh, we didn't have that kind of schools. Uh, these refugees maybe People heard about them in, nine, in 2014 during the Syrian war. Uh, some villagers from Kesap, Armenian village, just close to Turkey in the other side of, of the border, uh, they get captured and they get uh, like abandoned on the border with Turkey. Uh, they took off them from their houses and they dropped them on the road close to Vakifla. Uh, where that Armenians live, the last Armenian village in Turkey, and they was rescued by, by the Armenians and they live it there for more than two or three months. Uh, when I heard this story in Brazil, I decided to travel because, I don't know, it was a calling, like the season of the bird, to travel again. Uh, and I decided to bring with me uh, the camera of my grandfather. So these photos was took it by a Rolex Flex, a, a very well known large format camera. Uh, I decided to use them because it was a way to bring uh, my grandfather's feather memory with me. Uh, and it was like something was calling me. And this man was the one who was calling me. This man with the key is Hagop Kiragosian. He also used to be a photographer in Kesap. And during the 50s, late 50s, beginnings of the 1960s, he met my grandfather. He, they knew each other. Uh, and it was a very touched moment when we, we understand that. And I was with his camera. And he was just holding his key because when they left Kesap, he said, I, I was able to lock my house and escape. Uh, but I will return and some months after he was able to return once again uh, uh, to his house and unfortunately he died there. 
but uh, it's important to say that something repeats in our history and it's important to say uh, that uh, sometimes is sad but also sometimes uh, the meetings are very meaningful and can produce new sen sentiments no uh, these are some ruins uh, in really deep historical Armenia uh, left one is Ergen church near to Harpert uh, the other one is near to Ani uh, just on the border of the present Armenia here we have a sister and a brother uh, who lives in Arab Kir. Uh, they, they had the only shop of the village and they, they are, I think in that moment, 92 and 90 years, hope they're still alive. I don't know these years about them, uh, but they are the ones who runs the commerce in that small village, keeping the shop. And they are also uh, Armenian descendants. Okay, uh, I'll finish this part with a bird and I will travel to another part of the, the world. Uh, let's go to see a little bit about Brazil. Uh, it's another work that I did uh, for a publishing house uh, in Brazil. Uh, it's about the wildlife. It's a completely changed uh, about the other issue, but uh, it's to show how important is the photography. No, because the photography, uh, as the title say, to build language, this multitask uh, 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 power of the photography is something that attracts me since the, 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 my early years uh, when I was a student and then in the university during architecture. Uh, uh, it helped me a lot uh, to, to discover the cities and the landscapes. And this area, it's a really, really uh, important area in matter of biodiversity. No, it's one of the richest areas of the world. Uh, it's located between Brazil, Paraguay, and Bolivia. It covers more than 250,000 square kilometers. Uh, it's the biggest wetlands of the world. Uh, can be compared with the Everglades in Florida. Uh, there lives thousands of species of flora and fauna. And to me, it was a big challenge to cover this, this issue because since then, uh, I was a nature lover, but I was not uh, uh, accustomed with photographs in the wildlife. And then uh, I, I was uh, challenged to, to improve uh, this test, this part of the photography. Uh, and then I, we understand that uh, not only be there, but understand the time, the sun, the birds, how the animals move, which time for better for each animal. Uh, so I start to travel around this area. It's a really, really uh, huge area. So there is no roads. You need to travel by horse. Uh, they have a really special connection with the horses in this region because is they are everything. Uh, so uh, things uh, take days to days to to move to a, the, the place and another to another. Uh, and then we start to met uh, during this long journey. It was more than four months traveling around the real natural and wildlife you know, that's still present there. Many animals who are in risk of extinction still living there. Uh, and it was interesting to see uh, another face of, of our richness. You know? uh, people there can be compared with the American cowboys, but they have their own uh, practices and they, their own uh, uh, stuff, no, in the, in the day life. Uh, there's some more than 1,000 species of birds. This is called spoonbill. I think in English, it's by my research, you have like a spoon on the on the beak, and uh, yeah, it's amazing, no, how the nature can provide uh, this these colors. Uh, this is the well-known blue macaw who was. 
really in risk of extinction. Many NGOs dedicate years and years to, to save them. Uh, they are so interesting animals uh, because they live as long as human, more or less 70 to 80 years. And they decide to, to, to when they decide the couple, they stay with the same until the end. So they always travel together, male and female, and they build their needles and uh, uh, they live together for the whole life. And they are beautiful as the color of the blue can, can say to us, no? Uh, when you travel for an a, a, a issue like that, a project like that, you need to have, of course, a, a source of lens and uh, three points because that it's not easy to 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 capture uh, that moment and at that moment was everything so heavy still but uh, today uh, maybe it's it's better with all the digital stuff uh, here there is a a, a hidden bird uh, there is they call the master of the disguise now it's called Urutau. Uh, it's a bird who have no turn habits and during the day, he needs to disguise himself to, to, to be protected of another bird who they are predators of, of it. I think is it clear what it is. Uh, here we have another one of, of the Urutau. It's a very rare bird. Uh, I learned with some German people who I met by, by chance. Uh, I was looking for another thing and they said, no, you should come with us because uh, we will see they are bird watchers, no? that groups that travel all over the world. And really was like three days walk and I was never seeing. And then I was able to see with, with a, a binocular that they had. Uh, and yeah, this is the Tuyuyu, is the largest bird of the Pantanal. Uh, it can reach two meters of length between the wings. So it's a huge, huge bird when it's flying, uh, a portrait of the cowboy of Pantanal. Uh, things start so early, like three of the morning. So when it is one, 10, 11 of the day, they stop to drink terere. It's a kind of herb that they drink with cold water. Uh, it's typical moment of the Cowboys there, uh, yeah, the horses that makes part of them. It's a cavalo pantaneiro, pantaneiro horse they call. Uh, this kind of species of horse develop a, a way to eat under the water. So it's interesting how the nature can build also uh, the animals who lives in some specific zones. Um, hey, hey Nora, sorry to interrupt. Do, do you mind if maybe um, for the sake of time, can we move to the next section? Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. For the sake of time, because um, yeah. I, I know we're going to want to look yeah, at I, I think and then for questions. The, the, the last one, yeah. Great, great. Yeah. So let's go back to the beginning where I start. I just, this is interesting because the matter of time, no? Uh, today with the motor drives, uh, I don't know, at that time it was seven frames per second, but you can lost the photo or you can have this half of the photo, but you have the photo, no? But okay, let's conclude Pantanal. Let's talk about Aleppo and history photos. Uh, it's a work that I'm, uh, is a work in progress. I'm working on the archives of Avedis, my grandfather. Uh, when he moved to Brazil, he brings a lot of material with him, uh, but also he left a lot of material in Syria because the studio uh, still worked until the 80s. And uh, he, he, in Brazil, he dedicated himself to, to another profession. Uh, so I start to work with the photos that he bring with him. And then I decide to travel uh, just after the war to look for part of his archive. Avedis, he was uh, 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 well-known by his portraits. Uh, in that moment, it was 
so important the portraits for the people, no? The family portraits, the personal portraits, professional portraits. So uh, uh, he was able to photograph many prominent Armenians who passed through Aleppo, no? Uh, during the 30s, the 40s, until the 60s. Uh, so he was able to photograph Sarukhan, he's a well-known caricaturist Armenian, uh, Arshak Chobanian, uh, is a poet and a writer. Uh, Hago Oshagan. This is a very well-known portrait of Oshagan. It's photo of Avedis. We have some another ones that was never published, and I was talking with his grandson Ara, and he didn't believe because this is the well-known photo of Oshagan. But there is other photos that maybe soon can be uh, published. Uh, he also photographed some uh, ecclesiastics. No, this I think is Sahak, we are apart from Giligia. Uh, and this is so interesting. Arto mentioned that we met each other in, in Armenia in 2016. And Arto, please introduce this very gentleman and beautiful yeah. man. Yeah, just unbelievable. When when we met in um, Armenia, uh, Norad was telling me about this project. And when I don't remember how it came up, but um, when he found out that my dad's brother, my my uncle, my dad's oldest brother, was uh, Zare Gatorigos of Antilias, um, he said, "Oh my God, I have to show you something." And he showed me these photos that his grandfather. Um, had taken, this is my uncle, um, he was ordained as Zare, his, his, his birth name is Simon Payaslian. Unfortunately, I never got to, to meet my dad's brother. Um, he died in 1963, way before my time. But it's just, it takes my breath away because I'd never, in all of the archives my family has, I, I had never seen these two, we didn't have these two photos. Um, so it's it's yeah, um, yeah it's amazing, no? How how the photography can build, no? It can build not only our friendship that starts from this photo, but can build a, a possibility to construct something new about the history through one image or through a collection of images. So absolutely, no, right. that's and so this so is important. Why, how yes. the archives are important. How to yes, keep yes. alive the memory is important. Yes, and people yes. say not only the past, the pa always the pa but the present is based on the past, and we need the past to construct the future. So, uh, so photography is, is is a real powerful source of everything. No, that's right. Yeah, uh, Avedis also was a, a, a photographer of four or five presidents of Syria. No, I I, I put two of them here. Shukri Kwatli is a well-known photographer. Husni Zain also a, a, a well-known president. So the official portraits that he made for several presidents uh, made him well, quite well-known in Syria. Uh, and uh, he also photographed the development of Syria during uh, the first years after the independence. Uh, he, he traveled uh, the country uh, photographing industries, pipe, pipelines, soap fa uh, fabric uh, industries, uh, cotton uh, uh, processing uh, uh, places. So this is also important to show uh, a moment that Syria get independent and how the, 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 the country was growing. You no, know? so uh, these works are also important. It's made it in a very important moment uh, of, of, of the, the, the Syrian country. Uh, he also play with light and shadow. No, these these two photos. It's interesting how uh, you can in a studio with no, of course, digital moment. Is we are talking about the 40s or the 50s, and uh, with the the tools that they had in that moment, they they can uh, build interesting photos with shadows and lights. No, um, and this photo was one of the most touchable photos to me because it makes parts of a collection of that was publicated in a book uh, by Robert Jebedian uh, in the beginning of the 80s about the Armenian refugee camps in Aleppo, uh, who settled since the 1922 until 1936. And Avedis in this moment was beginning 
uh, in the photography with Vartan Derunian. Uh, then Derunian left the city and he's still photographing uh, these refugee camps, but uh, I never found the trace of these negatives. We have some uh, copies, printed copies, but not the negatives. And during one of my trips, I met someone that told me that probably this negative is still in Aleppo, but was the war. I was not able to travel until the end of the war when they give me the visa. And I went to, to, to Halep to, to try to find them. No, uh, I have the reference of the souk né, that I photographed after the war. But then uh, I, I was lucky to visit this, this foundation who once upon a time was his friend foundation, Robert Jepedian. Uh, his second life, a wife uh, who in that moment still alive, uh, she opened the doors and she said, yes, uh, maybe we we'll have some negatives of your grandfather and uh, was a war time. So Syria was completely destructed. Uh, and in this room, I found a really important part of my research. No, that was glass negatives about that refugee camps. Uh, it's, I didn't process it the moment. I, I was thinking how I would bring them to Brazil because it was like eight kilos of glass and you cannot travel on the airplanes or with, with glass. Uh, so I bought a, a, a tablet that's a well known uh, uh, thing in, in Syria. And uh, I said, okay, it will be by chance if they will arrive. Uh, and they will arrive in Brazil. And now I'm working uh, uh, how uh, to, to digitalize, to clean them. Uh, I will ask a lot of things to, to Project Save because I know that you all guys did an amazing job uh, with negatives. Uh, but the idea is, is to, to, to make a work with them. Uh, this one was broken, but I, I digitalized it and we can clearly identify that these two women, refugees in that moment, they are from Marash by the needlework that they are doing. No, uh, but we can see that a lot of details, no photography, uh, you should always look 10, 12,000 times to the same image because you will always notice something new. Uh, so is it, this is... Uh, Louise Jebejan, uh, the second wife who kept the archive. I am so thankful that she kept and she, she, she transferred that uh, to, to me, to my family. Uh, this photo was, was a, a little surprise to me because when you guys publish it, it makes me remember that I photographed this little uh, beautiful girl in 2004 in Armenia and then I returned in 2012 photograph she again at the same place. And now I'm thinking that I'm in Armenia, maybe try to, to go to see her if she's still there, hope to meet her again. And this is also important. Now photography can uh, build a history between uh, people and time. And yeah, I think this is the last image. And uh, with this, I can Pass to the questions. Uh, it's the present border between historical Armenia and actual Armenia with the Surpurgich church on the middle. You no, know, this closed border who is so talked during the last century, uh, but the nature can cross it as a bird or as a rainbow. Uh, it will be always open if you feel your heart open to understand it. That's it, Arto. Sorry, because there's a oh, many stories. Thank you so much, Norak. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, it's uh, such a wonderful, diverse range of, of photographs. So um, as, as people kind of uh, jump into the conversation, and uh, so everyone can uh, share questions in the chat screen. Um, and then uh, I will kind of pass those along uh, to Norad as we're as we're talking. Yeah, Norad, feel you feel free to turn off the screen share. Yeah. Um, so um, I guess Norad, the first kind of uh, my question as I think about just the range of your photographs, all the different locations, uh, the time periods in which you're kind of working with your own photographs, your. your 
grandfathers, all the archives in your family and so forth. I started thinking, how does that connect? I mean, you were born in Brazil, right? In Sao, Sao Paulo. Yeah, I'm yeah. Born, born, born and grow in Sao Paulo. Brazil. Right. Yeah. So how does how does you know yeah. how does not only your own photography but this history of photography yeah. in your family, how does that connect to your kind of the way you negotiate and handle your Brazilian identity and your Armenian uh, background? I think this exactly this plurality of of tasks and reference. Uh, uh made uh, me as a photographer no uh once you have the reference of the armenian background you can carry it or not but it's a huge baggage uh and a huge uh, a mission uh, that that we receive no this is in one hand in other hand i grew up in brazil who is a country uh, a huge country with a huge biodiversity a huge range of uh, immigrants uh, so uh, I, I, I like too much uh, to, to learn new things with new people, to travel. Uh, during my uh, university time, uh, I, I discovered all the architecture through the photography because it uh, was a way to document, it was a way to understand and then develop uh, issues connected with photography, light, shadow, composition, but also understand moments and periods of architecture. So. I think this multitask uh, 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 thing in, on me, it came also with the photography because the photography is a, is a tool can, who can uh, uh, serve for, for many, many uh, uh, specific uh, uh, areas. No, you can photograph fashion, uh, architecture, uh, uh, portraits, uh, journalism. So this is, what I call a tool, no, it's a multifunctional, uh, and I feel myself uh, uh, like this because yeah. the reference came from uh, many places, and I didn't e elect one. I tried to make them together and try to construct something personal uh, yeah. who can, I don't know, express what I yeah. I felt. It's interesting. I mean, it, you know, I was thinking about what you said about the multiplicity. Uh -huh. And um, I think, you know, um, I, I wonder if maybe there hasn't been enough of that kind of conversation in our discourse in the Armenian world. So for you, for example, as a Brazilian Armenian, uh, Project Save, our, our founder, uh, Ruth Tomasian, is half Armenian. Uh -huh. um, um, I'm, uh, my, my heritage is, uh, my, my kind of ethnicity is full Armenian, but I was born uh, here in, in, in Boston and, you know, sometimes I feel more American than I feel Armenian. Sometimes I feel more Armenian than I feel American. And I think that, that, that there's a power in that, it, it, you know, if you let it, it can be maybe a problem or it can be something you have to uh, uh, struggle with. Um, other times, or maybe at the same time, I think it can also be a, a power, uh, maybe especially yeah. in, in the arts, for example. Uh, yeah. And with that, I was going to ask you, so how does then also, how does the architecture, I mean, you are a trained architect as well. Is yeah. there a way that for you, architecture and yeah. photography? Yeah, my day by day uh, is an architect day by day. I have my own studio. Uh, I work with uh, projects. Uh, that uh, I had some uh, partners in some works, but uh, the photography come as a, a, a long-term project. You no, know, I, I like to dedicate time because photographers know you, our treasure is the time. So sometimes you have few time, sometimes you have a lot of time, but uh, for the kind of project that I, I, I dedicate myself, it's long-term projects. So uh, it's architecture is my everyday, uh, but in parallel, I am always researching, looking for, and then uh, preparing the next journey. Uh, but to me, Artojan, to, to be honest, architecture and photography, they are everywhere and they are together on my life. When I am drawing, I am thinking about light composition. Uh, when I am photographing the same, uh, the shadows and everything. So uh, it's like a helicoid of the DNA. They are 
completely connected to me and since my childhood my father is an architect my grandfather is a oh. photographer so dealing with both uh, i think i i i, I could uh, made my 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 life as a professional in both yeah it's uh, very much uh, very much in your blood yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 um um not that i'm wondering uh we have a question that's saying that you know your the, your photographs are so beautiful and so um dramatic uh and it's kind of a twofold question they're asking um are you kind of looking for and this is probably to a lot of photographers they they get this kind of question are you looking for like a perfect uh shot or is it multiple 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 shots that then for you are some kind of aggregate or how did yeah. uh, photographers have their own methodology no uh, uh I, I photograph very few if you compare with photojournalists or uh, wildlife photographers that take thousands and thousands of photos. Mm -hmm. I prefer to observe more and photograph less, but when I photograph, I really know what I want uh, uh, to be detected. Uh, it's a matter of methodology. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it's from every, every, everyone has his own. Uh, uh, and with the digital, this has changed a lot uh, because you have no more limit. Uh, yeah, you have the limit of the card, but uh, with the technology you have un, 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 uh, <laughs> big cards and memories, but uh, I, I still photographing with film also because I think the process is, is yeah. distinct, no? Uh, it's a matter of language, no? Because the approach is different. The approach of the issue is different, of the people that you are photographing is different. So uh, 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 photography have today this many uh, bifurcations, no? many uh, divisions and uh, everyone, every photographer have his own. Uh, but I, I, I am not a, 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 a photographer of a lot of images. I prefer to do less and try mm. to think more and shoot less, but shoot uh, trying to detect exactly what we so, want. So you do. You're you're saying that uh, you you still do all film photography? Yeah, I do both, Arto. Yeah, both. and it's like uh, depending of the 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 issue, the urgency. Uh, uh, I, I decide what support to use. Uh, of course, the digital is very uh, easy today. No, it's not more a matter of quality. When the digital begins, is was a question of quality. But today, nobody can say about uh, no photograph in film is better of than the digital. Uh, I, I didn't agree with that. I think it's a matter of methodology and a matter of language a, a way that you want to to touch the issue the issue no uh, is the way that you photograph right so, right um what uh, when was the um <clears throat> when you first uh traveled to did you go did you travel to turkey and to, to present day armenia at the same time or were those different trips uh, between 2012 and 2015, like in this uh, gap of three years, I, I spent almost two uh, years in Turkey. It was four different journeys of six, five, six months. Uh, in between, uh, I made some uh, escapes to Armenia. Mm -hmm. I crossed the border from Georgia. I climbed the Mount Ararat. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was so close and so far. And it was one of my, my wishes to, to deal with this border, no, uh, so close, so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, how is it possible, no? Uh, as uh, Herant Dink said many times about that bridge, who once upon a time was the, mm -hmm. the Silk Road Bridge who crossed uh, the, the Ahurian River, no? Uh, uh, and a friend of mine, said me, okay, and how about the fishes? They are Armenians, they are Turks today, what they are? Who can fish them? Uh, and nobody fish them. They, they, they are planted there because the access is not allowed. Uh, so uh, uh, I always like to deal also with the nature, you know, like that rainbow who, who crossed the, 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 the border. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, it's a chance it's to be there and to be lucky to to have that day, the sun and the rain. Uh, so yeah. yeah. And what, what was so? Um, what was your first visit to Turkey? Then your first visit to Armenia. What was that experience like? Not just as a first-time visitor, but uh, as a photographer. Um, did you engage? Like, did you meet other photographers? Or you got to know what's going on in terms of photography, let's say, in, in Armenia. And, and also, what was it like, um, uh, again, coming, you know, the, the Brazilian part of you, born and raised in Brazil, what was that like, you know? Yeah. Uh, to me, the, the journey to this side of the, the, the world uh, uh, starts a little bit late because uh, as I said, I, I was looking for time. I had the opportunity to travel to Armenia before, but I, I didn't make it because it was like short trips, opportunities. I said, no, I will have the time. So mm-hmm. in 2004, I decided to move to, to Armenia uh, and I lived here for one year. And in that moment, I was invited uh, by Armen Press to do a, a presentation of Brazil uh, in, in Armenia. So it was the gateway, the, the entrance to, to the photography world in Armenia. And in that moment, I met uh, Vahan Kochar. Uh, his, he was son of Antrani Kochar, also father and son photographers and artists. And together, he, he, he brings me all over the, the country. Uh, and that moment, Artsakh. And he teached me a lot about the, the Armenian society, the Armenian photographers he he introduced me to to a lot of people and i was just uh earning this experience to go to turkey i knew i knew that the first step was armenia and one day i will feel comfortable to visit turkey uh, was not easy that decision because again it's not a matter of go to istanbul and make tourism or stay some days here some day there it was like six months uh, and my first journey to Turkey was 2012. I didn't know no one, nobody. I just had the Agus address. Uh, I, I knocked the door. I was received by uh, Sarkis Seropian, who was my everything in my second work. So uh, these two people, they are key persons in, in, my, in my research. There's no Vahan Kochar in Armenia and then Sarkis Seropian. Uh, in Turkey, because Sarki said, I will help you because the work that you are proposing, nobody here wants to do. And this is a work that if I was young, I want to do. So he opened his diaries, his maps and his secret contacts and he shared it with me. Uh, and in a kind of way, I, I made it all possible through, through his, his uh, tips and and, and have you have you also because the, the photographs you have from Syria and now of course uh, starting around 2013 um, mm-hmm. all of the Syrian Armenians that are in Yerevan and in Armenia yes, uh, yes. that yeah, must my, that must have also kind of t- yeah colored your experience there and maybe you had family members or yeah I have many friends who who fl- who come from Syria to here. Because my first idea was to do what my grandfather family did, walk from Marash uh, to Halep. Uh, Mm -hmm. So when I arrived in Marash, uh, the war begins in Syria. So I call my friends and they said, okay, maybe you can come, but we don't know if you can go out. It was 2012, 13. Mm -hmm. So it was the beginning of what we know was a horrible war so i changed my plans and i i i had visited syria before uh, but uh, things came in the right time and then i returned to syria now in 2019 yeah uh, and i photographed the, the destroyed country but also it's impressive you know how they destroyed the country and how people still lie, live there and smile mm-hmm. and be kindly this is also amazing of the of on the photography that uh, he gives you a power on, you cannot find everywhere in every people. Yeah. So to photography, um, you can. Yeah. Speaking of which, so someone is asking, um, when you were in Turkey, uh, and you know, you met these kind of uh, uh, Kurdified or Turkified Armenians who still had their attachment to their mm-hmm. past um, but at the same time, did you? This person is asking, um, did what about 
other uh, Turkish people, were they very curious about what you're doing or were they asking you questions or did you get any? Yeah, yeah. When I found the message, uh, uh, I called Seropian and he gave uh, a, a huge uh, 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 reportage on Agus and my story be becomes more or less well known in Turkey. And after that, I, I start to feel that I was being followed. Uh, so I returned to, to Istanbul. I, I went to talk with Sarkis and he said, don't worry, they are protecting you. Uh, I didn't know if he said that, so I didn't give up the project or, or if it was true. Wow. Uh, okay. Then I made many contacts. Uh, I become so close of Anadolu Kultur and our friend Osman Kavala, who is in jail now uh, for the wrongs of that government. Uh, but he also was the a man, a key person in my project because he pushed me up and said, no, continue, nothing will happen because we can see that uh, your, your, your goal is, is clear and, and we're going to help you. Uh, of course, in that moment, I was not married without a son. I don't know if today in the present days of Turkey, I, I did the same, but right. I was lucky to do it in that time. Yeah. Turkey changed a lot after 2016, yeah. and uh, yeah, uh, I think, I think it was I, that moment. Yeah, I, I think you're hitting on something um, that's so key uh, that that I try to kind of express to to people when I talk about Project Save. That you know, think of where we are in the world right now how precarious things are. Um, just as like, you know, I think now about all the places I got to spend time while I was living in Armenia, inside Armenia, outside in that region, that, I mean, some of those places aren't even in Armenian hands anymore. Other places, I just yeah. feel comfortable, parts of Turkey or uh, parts of Iran or so forth. So I, that connects to how important photography is and how important archiving yeah. photographs yeah. Uh, yeah. how that important because once these things are gone you know once these photographs are gone that's it that's yeah. the hardest best evidence uh people can have yeah. not just about their memories but more collective cultural uh moments um it's it's uh, yeah yeah it's yeah. amazing how just in a few short years that things can change very drastically and those photographs take on an extra yeah. And is it changing? No, I'm now here in Armenia and it's a completely different country that I saw in 2019, my last visit. Now in this between, there was a pandemic, there was a war, two wars, war in Ukraine, a lot of Russians came, uh, the situation is not clear, uh, people is uh, quite confused about what happened, what's happening and what's coming next. Yeah. So uh, photography can uh, navigate in, in, in all these fields and can be a useful tool to, to connect the yeah. parts and everything, no? Yes. Uh, so the importance of the archives, uh, they, they are, hope they are grow every day and people get, they give them more value that they have uh, today because uh, it's there, it's, it's yeah. a treasure. No, yeah. all, all, many of the questions, uh, uh, the answers are on the archives, on the photos. You just need to connect the parts and uh, try to do the parallels with the present days in the present moments and on the issue, issue that you are working on. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Um, we have a question from uh, our, our uh, good mutual friend, Talin, Voskedi Chan. Hey, Talin. Mm -hmm. um, so not our, Talin's asking, how did you choose? Uh, well, first she's, she's um, uh, thanking you for your work and for sharing uh, uh, Deranyan Studios photos and photos of her grandfather, Hagop Oshagan, that, that, uh, that wonderful portrait. Um, her question is, what, how, how did you choose in the Emptiness uh, series? How did you go about choosing um, the sites and the, the, the houses, buildings, areas that you want to portray as sites of emptiness? Yeah. Obviously, you're uh, capturing something, but you're trying to capture something that's absent. So there's a contradiction yeah. there. How did you kind of? Yeah, this is a really good question because at the end of the journey, uh, I had thousands of photos, and it was not easy to do this this edition. No, we we as photographer we know that 
one of the most difficult part is the editing. No, mm -hmm. so I decided to do something that for many photographers is wow, how you did it, why? No, it's wrong. But I invite a lot of people who made part of my journey, mm -hmm. Turkish, Armenian, Kurdish, other nationalities. Uh, we are like a collective of artists in that moment in Istanbul. And we did like a editing together, putting two by two the photos and deciding uh, collectively, uh, sharing uh, the, 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 the sensations of the image uh, one with each other. So uh, maybe a photo that to me was, wow, this is photo is so nice. But then when I listen, the, the friends saying, no, this photo have this. Mm. So I said, wow, you are right. Uh, mm. uh, so it was difficult to edit and edit collectively. It was more difficult. Mm. Uh, but of course, as an architect, uh, if uh, she, she's, she can look the book and you have the book, uh, there is a, a, an architect eye also on the composition. There is a lot of architecture on the photo, on the photos, on the image. Uh, so this, uh, I think it was by this, but I have other materials that I didn't publish it yet, mm -hmm. maybe for another project. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, uh, I was just going to ask, well, What's your um, going back to Brazil? What what is your experience in Brazil? Uh, are there other like-minded uh, Brazilian Armenians like yourself who are in photography or or I know that yes. I know there's yes. a Cassiana. Yes, she'll be also. Yeah, we have Gary Gary Gananian. Uh, there is a no new generation also coming. What happened in Brazil that our uh, uh, diaspora is a uh, very old. Uh, right. the, the, we are in the fourth generation. Uh, the ones who come, who came, came uh, just after the genocide. Then we didn't receive new waves of migrations, and now uh, the young generation they are getting involved uh, uh, with the, the the Armenian history in another way. No, we not. We didn't have school. So uh, people are traveling to Armenia, are, are doing like volunteer works and art, not only photography, is a way to connect. No, there is many Brazilians who, Armenian Brazilians who are living in Armenia now. Uh, mm. So I think uh, there is a kind of rebirth in the new generation after uh, a period of absence. And uh, uh, of course, not many of them know speak Armenian, but I think is important, but is not uh, mandatory that you need to, to speak Armenian. Uh, so yeah, there is- That's another article. interesting point you're making that yeah, photography kind of like music or painting, it's one of those, um, photography has such a visceral power uh, that mm -hmm. also transcends, it's a universal language. So it also transcends specific, you know, Yeah. Um, you know, I think yeah. that there is a, there is a, yeah. a power and, to that. that yeah. even, so, so that's why, you know, I tell a lot of people that, um, you know, Project Save, we're really expanding our circle and our demographics because I think sometimes um, people think that, oh, only an Armenian would be interested in these photos, but that's absolutely not true. I, I'm, yeah. I'm seeing a lot, uh, you know, most of our advisory board now is, is not Armenian. Um, we're getting a lot of, because in photography, there's so much you're looking at. First of all, there's just a visceral quality to a photograph, even if you don't know what's going on or where it was taken or who these people are in the photo, whatever it is, there's such a visceral uh, quality in terms of its ability to communicate, uh, the artistry of it, the drama of it. All, I think that that's really uh, important. Yeah. And this diversity makes the, the, the whole... Uh, photography wonderful no we, we are not based just in one line of kind of photography no and right. if you take someone from brazil or from japan or from the us or from europe they yeah. are we, we use the two as a different way yeah. of expression yeah they are all photography but it's it's amazing how the identity and the background uh, can uh, scoop no, the 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 content. Um, so no, not, so now that you're in our, you're speaking to us from Armenia uh, on this trip, um, 
uh, do you, are you, and with how much things have changed, are you getting new ideas for a, 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 a new project or revisiting? Yes, uh, I think uh, I, I came for a short time to, to some uh, personal uh, meetings and uh, connected with architecture and also to identify some projects because uh, now in Brazil, we are thinking uh, that, okay, how you engage the young generation with the history and with Armenia? We need to present them projects. Uh, when I was really young or you are playing football in Brazil or you are playing music, uh, but today the new generations, they have a range of, a huge range of interests. So uh, we, we are trying to identify good projects that are going on here to bring people from Brazil and to try to connect these two, two parts. You know? uh, of course, here in Armenia, because it's important uh, people come and see. Uh, of course, it's not a good moment for the country, but this is one of the reasons that is important to be here because once you are here, you can easily identify uh, uh, what's going on and how you can move uh, as a civil society, as a, a diaspora, uh, to to really touch and uh, uh, reach the 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 important uh, projects that are going on, and there there is really good projects going on in Armenia. Uh, so, let's yeah, have, see. You, have you gotten to know a lot of the kind of what's going on in photography? I didn't have time yet, Arto, but I will connect with the friends here. Uh, I was on the village uh, where we have a house trying to finish the construction, but now these days I will be in the city and then uh, I will try to, to, to talk with them uh, and understand. I know there is some uh, photographers who are covering uh, the war and the consequence of the war, which is so important uh, because it's a way to spread our, our uh, suffering here. Uh, but also there are other artists doing other things also connected with the, the war, but not with that visual impact that uh, war photos uh, can give. I think all it's important and it's necessary. And once again, this is the matter of the importance of the photography, you know, this yes. plurality of, of visions and yeah. applications. Yeah, and I think, you know, I was just thinking back now to, um, uh, not not to make it personal, but it just kind of uh, is just a point I want to make that those photos of my uh, uncle that that you shared when we met. Mm -hmm. So that's very important in the sense that um, a lot of times when people think about donating their photographs to Project Save, a they think that the photographs have to be historic and mm -hmm. old. And B, they, they think that they shouldn't donate if they don't know who's in these photos. Mm -hmm. So, and I think those photos that you showed me, of my, that's why it's so important. So in other words, let's say you didn't know who my uncle was or whatever, but you just saved that because those are mm -hmm. your grandfather's portraits. So that's your connection to your grandfather. Mm -hmm. And then you show them to me and I say, oh my God, Norar, that's my uncle. Yeah. So in other words, you know, even if you, when you're, uh, it's important to preserve photographs because to the person who has the photographs, they might not, might not seem like such a big deal or it might seem like, well, this is just personal, so who cares? But actually that's why it's important that you preserve them and that those photos are, we're able to share them publicly because yeah. you never know what's going to happen. You don't know what yeah. dots are going to be connected and what stories are going to be not only are they going to be told, but they're going to be discovered that otherwise might have kind of gone by the wayside. Yeah. 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 No, it's amazing. And it's like a chain, you know, that you were agreeing always new, new parts of on this chain uh, and uh, our friendship. And then what we can do next uh, with this archive, we can, right. of course, think a lot of, 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 of ways to, to, to spread and to grow this chain. No, absolutely, totally. absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, do you have Do you have a project coming up in Brazil? Any? Uh, no, I'm really focused in this project about the, the archives of, of my grandfather and about Syria. 
Uh, in Brazil, I'm more focused now in architecture, uh, but uh, I, I have, I, I traveled a lot around Brazil and, and sometimes I participate in collective exhibitions, books uh, uh, with, uh, with my works. Uh, Brazil also is not in a good mood in a political uh, movement. Uh, they are burning the Amazon. They are changing uh, the law about the, the guns. So it's hope the elections can change. Yes, yeah, hopefully. Uh, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, we are going to a second round. Brazil yeah. also needs this, this yeah. change. Yes, uh, yes. But Hopefully Lula can do it. Yes. We'll make it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, on, on that note, uh, Norad, um, thank, I know it's so late in, in Yerevan. Thank you so much for taking the time. It was yeah. such a pleasure for all your great work. Um, thank you to everyone uh, for joining us. Um, we're so excited to get uh, started uh, with our series in the, this with, with Norad as our inaugural speaker. Our next speaker is going to be Elena Bulat, who is one of the head photo conservators at Harvard University. And also an advisory board member at uh, Project Save. Thank you all so much, Norad. Thank you very thank, much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arto, for the invitation. And uh, congratulations for Project Save. Let's keep photography always alive, memory always alive, and hope uh, soon to be together and to discuss more about photography. Thank you thank so you. much, Norad. Thank be you. well. Thank you. Good luck.